Hey YouTube, what's going on? It is Jaxar back here with another video, and today we're going to be playing the super, super toxic Royal Recruits Barb Hut Royal Hogs deck. This deck is just absolutely insanely toxic. You have the Barb Hut to be, apply constant pressure to your opponent with barbs constantly spawning out, and your opponent can't really kill it for an even elixir trade. Recruits are going to be your split lane defense. They're going to be so good at defending basically anything on the ground. They're just going to be able to cover your both lanes. Split lane pressure does not work against this deck at all. And then you have the Zappies and Flying Machine as air and ground defenses here. They are really good. The Flying Machine is super annoying. It pokes away at everything out of range. Zappies are going to be really good against um, basically anything where like charges or sparkies and stuff like that. You can reset them with the Prince. Not the Prince. You can reset the charge or whatever it is and stun everything. You have the Heal Spirit that combos with the Royal Hogs. And every card in this deck just heals everything up. It's absolutely insane. So without any further ado, let's hop right into some replays. All right, so the first replay here is going to be against just me. I have a really nice comeback in this game, and I wanted to show it just because of like how bad things looked until we were able to outplay outplay him with our bar putts and stuff. So I actually recorded this entire video, and it turned out my mic was on mute. And then I recorded the first half of another video um, on my alt account, and the mic quality was terrible. So if this mic quality is bad, I'm really sorry. Um, my headphones have been acting up. I'm going to be getting a new microphone hopefully within the next um, couple weeks. I don't, we're trying, I'm trying my hardest to get it uh, with the Black Friday deals. But um, yeah, I'm really, I really apologize if the mic is bad in this video. I'll try and, uh, you guys, even if it is bad, you guys can still hear me. It's just not good mic quality at all. So I blabbered through this entire first part of the replay about my mic, but he took our tower because we had a really awkward starting cycle. And so now I ignored that miner to build the elixir advantage. So coming up to speed, we lose our tower because recruits don't do well against a lot of stack troops on their own. And we just kind of had to deal with it because there's pretty much nothing I could do without my barb hut. So... I ignore the miner for a large elixir advantage, and I go barb hunt in the back. That's what he can't just, like, put anything in the pocket and damage it. He's hesitant to fireball, so he doesn't go for fireball the zappies. So now I know he's going to want to fireball the hogs. Like, that's what he's saving his fireball for. So we go with the zappies, and, or we the zappies get a lot of value, basically kill off the mega minion. And he's going to go in with a giant into four recruits. He's trying to do the same thing that took it my tower the first time. It's not going to work this time. I go with the flying machine, or I go with the heal spirit to heal everything, and now look at this counter push. And this is the turning point in the match. Here, I could go royal hogs with my big counter push and give them a ton of fireball value and probably lose the game because they'll be able to defend for almost no elixir. My recruits have no shields. Everything dies to the fireball. But instead, I go royal hogs in the other lane. And this is gonna he's wanting to fireball the hogs. So this fireball, he's going to fireball that, and now he's too low on elixir. We go with the barbell. And we are going to take this tower with the recruits and the three barbs from the heart, hut and the barbell along with the flying machine. So now we're in a really nice position because we can kind of play same lane as him. We can play our barb huts and stuff, and he's not going to be able to break through. So we go with our zappies. And this is just to make sure we have a reset. We can stun the giant, stun the princess. He's going to go in with the um, giant in the back. And I know since he doesn't have a fireball on cycle, I can stack all these units in this lane and not like two fireball units right on top of each other. Not have to worry about him getting fireball value. So obviously really nice there. Now my flying machine does lock onto the King, but look at how we have three zappies alive, basically two because one, because the first zappy dies, but we have two barbs here and now he's going to have to worry about this three crown. He can't support his push because he has to worry about getting three crowned. So we get a really easy defense off here. No damage taken. Now we have nice counter push as well. So cycle my heal spirit in the back. He's going to go with a prince. And I go with recruits of the bridge. I had to fix my cycle here. And by fix my cycle, I mean get a barb hut and cycle and not bleed on any elixir. So since he uses his fireball, we're able to go in really aggressively here. Bar barrel. We're trying to get this king tower down as low as we can. We're going to go in with the fireball on this Ewiz and dark prince. And the dark prince does get hit by the fireball, which is so nice because now it's basically dead. It's pretty, like, it's just going to die to anything. So go with the Zappies. I tried to reset this Prince. It's all right, though. We don't really care about that. King Tower is still way stronger. So here he's going to stack same lane, which is a good play by him. And um, unfortunately for him, his Giant is going to, or fortunately for us, the Flying Machine is going to go and target the Arena Tower. My battery just uh, is low now. Giant's going to target the Arena Tower. 
and or yeah flying machine excuse me and so now he's got a big push coming and we almost choked this um choked it from right here we go in with the zappies he'll spirit those up so that they don't die to the miner but he's gonna fireball them anyway now we go with the flying machine and we're in damage control we're taking a lot of damage here but we don't want to take too much so the princes do get on tower but they're not gonna three crown me or not take my tower excuse me so i go in for the three crown he's gonna go with an ewiz and a zap and I go with the fireball, 20 HP separating me and victory. But first we have to defend all of this. I fail my bar barrel, but it doesn't matter. We still kill the Ewas. That was the point of it. We go with our bar putt, and we're just trying to delay as much as I can here. We go in with the heal spirit to tank the charge. I need to preserve this bar putt's HP. Go in with the pigs now that we have them back and cycle. And we are going to walk away with the win. Even with that really bad start, this deck can come back against anything. And so really nice stuff right there. And we're going to go on to the next replay. All right, so we're going to share a replay loss here against um, Jerry. And the first part of this loss comes mainly from the f starting hands, which play a really big role in the matchups, because he goes in with a giant skeleton in the back here. I don't have anything for that. I don't have my Barba. I don't have my recruits. So I have to cycle my pigs opposite lane. And I give him a King Tower activation and a huge counter push. Like, this is just really unfortunate for me, because the giant skeleton does come back, giving him time to build even more elixir. And now there's pretty much nothing I can do to defend this. I accidentally split two zappies to the wrong or the wrong lane. That kind of helped him uh, here a lot, but there's pretty much nothing I can do to defend this really without taking at least a lot of damage. Just because we didn't have anything for his, um, uh, just because we didn't have anything for his giant skeleton to mirror to start. So the two zappies do force out his own zappies. Giant skeleton bomb does uh, kill everything though, and now his royal giant is going to take. All but one hit off our tower. So I know I'm back to my hogs. And I know I got to catch up on damage. So I go in with the royal hogs. And he goes with an earthquake and then a bar barrel. So really well played there. That's going to be a pretty easy defense. And while I'm up a bit of elixir, there's not really too much I can do to capitalize on the elixir advantage at the moment. So I think I set up with a barb height here just because like it's going to deny that lane. He's had to have an earthquake, but it's out of cycle. And I really just want to deny that lane so that I can hopefully catch up and damage. And this was probably the correct play because we do force out a lot of elixir. This guy doesn't have good barb hut answers, you know. Giant Skeleton doesn't do very well against a barb hut. And Fisherman doesn't do very well against barb hut. Only his earthquake does. So here we can actually get a really nice counter push going. And I go with my flying machine right there, and he goes in with zappies. So I knew I need to eliminate those ASAP. Those gotta go right now. And then I go in with my heal spirit to heal up the flying machine. And unfortunately, those four barbs are going to die to the giant skeleton. But the pigs are gonna come in, and even the barbell is not gonna be enough to defend. And we are gonna basically take his tower back. I was like, can we please get to fireball range? Please get to fireball range. And we do get to fireball range. So now um, we're in a decent spot. We do have about the same damage on the other tower, so we've managed to come weed our way back into this game. So now, now I need to just try and defend as long as I can. I go with the barbell to try and take this tower, and since he went split zappies, I'm okay to fireball this fisherman. Um, it is a slight overcommit, but it could be a lot worse of an overcommit, especially since he's going to use his earthquake just to take our tower there too. So now he's back to another giant skeleton. And he goes in with the barbell on the uh, with the barb hut. We do use the heal spirit to heal up the barbarians. And the fly flying machine does take some damage, but it does end up dying. I go with my own zappies to counteract his zappies. And the flying machine does not die in the bomb. And that's so good for us. Because now he's going to have to spin to kill that flying machine. Or else it's going to get even more value. So he goes in with the hunter. So I forgot he had the hunter, honestly. And we do end up killing off this giant skeleton with ease, though. He's back to a third giant skeleton. I say third, he only had two on the map, but like the third one in a minute. So here, again, got to get rid of these zappies. And I go into the heal spirit, and here I just have to like, I tried to pull the zappies. I tried to pull the giant skeleton back, and this is where the game ends. I tried to pull the giant skeleton back, but we failed. And so he does walk away with the win. That bomb will do enough damage. So I think what could have happened there, well, obviously the starting hand. If it hadn't been starting handed like that, we would have been able to do a little bit better. But I think also if I had just played a little bit, um, if I had hit that kite, I think we would have been fine because I was playing really well after. It just, we kind of missed that kite and that cost us the entire game there. So my game is lagging really bad. I'm going to go ahead and reset that and then we'll hop right into some live games 
and I'll see you right there. All right, so going into our first game here against Saeed from Iran, Jordan. So he's going to go with a minor first play. I don't want to use my Zappies here just because there's so much. They're like, I think they're more valuable than the flying machine here. I didn't have my barbell, I don't think, unless I just panic played the flying machine and missed it. And I don't really want to use my recruits. So here we'll go with our Zappies. So he's going to have a minor and a hog rider. I don't know what this could be. So he's going to go in with the arrow zap. He just spent a hog rider. So he spent three, seven, and then 12. And I only spent eight. So I think we're going to go Royal Hog's Heal Spirit. Yeah, perfect. So the Valkyrie is going to do a pretty good job, but the Heal Spirit is going to allow my uh, hogs to get a ton of damage here. We're going to get almost 1,000 damage off his tower, over 1,000 damage off his tower. And we're looking really, we're looking pretty good here. So we're going to go in with recruits here. Four, two split. And then we're going to go with my bar barrel just to add another tank for this mini P.E.K.K.A. And we're going to get off a pretty good defense here, I think. Yeah, we are. So now he has to worry about those recruits on the left or else they're going to get a lot of damage. And he looks like he's just going to ignore them. So I'm going to go with my Barbarian Hut high to pull his Hog Rider. And look at how much damage those recruits got, guys. That's absolutely crazy to me how much damage they can get. So he's going to go in with actually the Goblin Hut. So I'm going to Fireball that. I just don't want to have to deal with that. Or I don't want to have to deal with too many of those Goblins. So let's see if he's going to Hog Rider here. Looks like he's not going to. So we're going to go in with our Flying Machine. Oh, and he is now. So we're going to go with the Zappies and we're going to go with the Heal Spirit. So we're going to take a lot of damage here. Probably, we might even lose the tower. Actually, no, we're not going to lose the tower. But we do take a ton of damage. And this is partly just because I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he wastes his arrows, guys. We can spam our real hogs here. Flying Machine is going to die. But because he wasted the arrows, he's not going to have enough for Valk immediately. Okay, it looks like we are going to take his tower. I can ignore this miner. And I'm actually going to keep on the Elixir Advantage. So my charger just came unplugged. Let me get that back in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we can just take this elixir advantage. We're going to go with our barb hut. Kind of misplayed it. I could have played it a little bit uh, better. But it's perfectly fine here. So now we've learned our lesson. This guy has a minion horde. I don't want to use my fireball here. So we do have this barb hut denying lane. He still has to take this tower, which is going to be a really nice... Um, really nice for me. We're going to fireball this minion horde. The minion horde is much more annoying to me than the goblin hut. So I'm actually going to set up with recruits in the back here. Just to deny this lane, we're almost back to our Barb Hut too. So we're going to go with the Heal Spirit. Can we catch that Miner? No, we can't, but we can at least heal up those recruits. So I'm actually going to go in really aggressively here because we do have so much counter push. All right, we're going to get a Fireball, a huge Fireball here. We're going to hit both Huts and the Valkyrie, I think. And I think we're going to be all right here. He's gonna, he still has to spin to take that tower. So we can go with the Barb Hut and uh, just hit all of those Spear Goblins. And he does end up taking the tower, but look at his king, guys. Look at how little HP it's got. The recruits are doing work, and we're going to walk away with the win. Recruits, or Royal Hogs coming in. So much Royal in this deck, I keep getting myself confused. And we're going to take the three crown. So the main points of that match is we didn't know what he was playing. Kind of like the global tournament, we didn't know what he was playing, so we didn't want to be too aggressive until we knew exactly his deck. Wanted to just take our time, wait for our chance, use our elixir advantage that we got, from him having to take that tower and three and go in for attacks, we were able to get huge fireball value, and he wasn't able to support that minion horde, which would have been deadly if he had, which is why I was able to go in for the fireball. So much value, he wouldn't be able to support. And then we were just have, splitting our recruits there was a perfect idea because it kind of did dueling. This guy literally lost his king tower without knowing it. So a really nice first game there, and we'll go into one more game here and see if we can get a win. All right, guys, so going into our final game of the video against Gustavo here from Bisturi. Bisturi, I don't know. I don't know why I put an accent on that. He's going to go with the Magic Archer. So we're just going to take this Fireball as soon as I can so that I don't bleed Elixir. And let's see what he's going to have here. Oh, my charger, guys. My charger keeps coming unplugged. He's going to have Ewiz and Magic Archer. So this might be P.E.K.K.A., which would be a really easy matchup for me. Just split our Zappies towards this Ewiz, and it looks like it is going to be P.E.K.K.A. So I'm actually going to go with my Barb Hut high. This is something that I've discovered while playing as the P.E.K.K.A. player that really annoys me, is when they Barb Hut high like this. Because it's going to prevent... It's going uh, it, This will pull both lanes no matter what he does. And it's going to provide such good pressure over there. We're going to get a ton of damage. He doesn't have a poison. So I think I'm fine to just go in with the flying machine here. And this P.E.K.K.A. should mostly die. The Barbs will get four hits if he lets them go. And yeah, this is just so good for us. This matchup. So since he doesn't have a P.E.K.K.A., I'm inclined to go with my recruits here. And then fireball a magic archer. 
because that's the only thing he's going to be able to use to defend. Perfect. Fireball. Heal Spirit. We are going to keep two of those recruits alive. Perfect. And we are going to get damage on the other lane as well. Recruits are just going to town, and he's going to have a battle ram, but I have enough for zappies. So that's just perfect for me. This literally could not be going any better. And it's just because of how good this matchup is, guys. Like, Pekka's not very good in the meta, and this is why. This matchup is one of the reasons why Pekka is just so bad. I It's nearly impossible for the Pekka player, no matter what he does. So, no matter where he Pekkas, if he does, I'm going to be going with my bar putt in the opposite lane, but high. And the reason, like I said earlier, to kite any battle ram he plays. So, oh, my charger. Charger, stop. Stop, charger. So, I don't have my fireball back in cycle yet, so this could be a little bit sketchy. Just going to go with our flying machine and then take the fireball on this magic archer ASAP. So he's going to go with his poison here. If I can get a heal spirit on this flying machine, I think it survives the poison. And do, we do get the heal spirit down. So does it survive the poison? Yes, it does. And that's just so, so good for us. Everything is going so perfectly here. We're going to split our recruits. Going to go with just our uh, barbell here. Let's kill off this Ewiz. And we are looking golden. Oh my god, guys, my charger. I'm so sorry about that. Um, fireball this magic archer. And then yeah, he's going to use his P.E.K.K.A. So now we can go in really aggressively opposite lane here. Nice at kite, actually, by him. But the battle ram is going to stay behind the or go in, in, in front of the P.E.K.K.A. So we just go with our barbell. He actually might take our tower here. Yeah, it looks like he might. Yeah, he's going to. So we're just going to let it go, though. We're going to get a nice fireball here. Look how much damage we've already gotten to his king tower, though. And the zappies are just there, stunning everything permanently. Uh, we are going to take some king tower damage of our own here, but I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, it looks like we should be a fine. So go with our um gonna go with our bar putt here. I should pull the battle ram, right? Yeah, it does. Okay, perfect. So now we can go in with the Royal Hogs and the Heal Spirit since he overcommitted into the bar putt. His units basically got no value. Heal Spirit's gonna get down and we're gonna get the win. Even though we choked our tower, we're still gonna walk away with a pretty easy victory. And yeah, so again, easy matchup. I completely choked there. That I shouldn't have even lost that tower at all. But I just kind of got aggressive. I didn't even need to play all the Royal Hogs and Heal Spirits to take his tower. But I think the main tip I want you guys to take away versus P.E.K.K.A. is always bar putt high so that it pulls both lanes but oppositely into the P.E.K.K.A. Because the bar putt's purpose is to pull the units together. It's not to have the barbs kill everything. The barbs are best used applying pressure and forcing out elixir on the other lane so that they don't have elixir to kill all of your defensive units. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My next video will be the first Road to Max video with my underleveled mini account. And I will see you guys on that video. Peace.